Le brano suta brana shante le pede zuta lia. Go ahead, pray in the spirit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, ala na ba ya na sote kete. Go ahead. Le brano su kala na ba shanda kozi kata ba ya na koze teria. La brano shata ba ya na koza ko para na shata lia. Yako kala na koze kaba ya na no shata ya na na. When you pray in the spirit, you are praying mysteries. Maruna shana koze teria. You enter into rain. Rams of glory. Go ahead and pray the spirit. Halano shala na na na. I know you are here. He galana no zekele nebo shata yadaba. Rano siko talana zoteria. When you pray in spirit, you resolve issues that your brain cannot resolve. He galana ma zota yana kosa to para na zoteria. He galana kosa no marona shatalia. When you pray in the spirit, you edify your spirit. When you pray in the spirit, you revive your spirit. You set to issues. Aka pa kozi kalana, embrano zi kalabayo na suka labaye, brana teko ti kalabaya no zi kalabaya, embrano zota baye kere mo shana bayana, rada ba 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 ba, rusa tabayana, embrano zi kalaba shana bayana, embrano zi kere de shana bayona kozi ta, brani kozi zako labayana. Rapa ba kote kele kede bo shanda la kader ibranosa ibranosha rani kote zaka ba yeni le kanaba bara na ma kozi kala ba yeni kozu telia bara na ma kozi kela ba yano kashala ba yana ibranosa kopa na shana kato zapara na kote ma kero na zota ba yana koza taya la kata ibranosha na ba ya you are igniting a fire. You are igniting the fire of the Holy Ghost when you pray the Spirit. Ako pare nato, ebra nato zakala nash, baruda zekota ha, para na kuza ho para na shata, pero na zokala bayano kazote dia. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are. Read. Please have your seat in God's presence. Praise the Lord. Tonight we continue on our series Scriptural Ways to Survive in Hard Times. Scriptural Ways to Survive. In hard times. We started this series last week. We want to continue. And as the Lord will help us. We are going to be digging so deep. Into this issue. Remember last week, uh, we established from the scripture that the only way to survive in this end time or in this hard time, because this is also signifying the end of the age. is to live by the scriptures and then we're able to bring out one foundational uh, point 
and that is living by faith um, i'm going to bring two scriptures out of the scriptures we read last week just so as to remind us of where we started hebrew chapter 10 verse 38 hebrew chapter 10 verse 38 it said now now the just shall live by faith so the way to live now is to live by faith he said now now i may not be talking about other times but now now in this present time that word now means this present time he said now the just shall live by faith Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 I love this so much Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 he said behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him right but the just shall live by his faith the just shall live by his faith so the just is not going to live on borrowed faith the just shall live by his faith so you are not going to live by your pastor's faith you are not going to live by your neighbor's faith you are going to live by your faith so it's a personal thing all right the husband is not going to live by his wife's faith and the wife is not going to live by his husband's faith everybody will live by his faith the question is do you have that faith that guarantees life do you do you have that faith that guarantees your survival and that's why we need to begin to look at this remember we're able to define give one definition of faith right i said faith is despising the obvious in order to achieve the needful despising the obvious despising the obvious in order to achieve the needful abraham hoped against hope he did not consider the deadness of his body neither did he look at the deadness of the womb of mary abby of sarah concluded the womb of sarah was dead not half dead completely dead and the body of abraham was dead but by faith He despised the fact that the body was dead and the womb of the wife was dead. He despised it to believe God and to hold God by his word. And then they had Isaac. They had Isaac. They had Isaac. The deadness of the body of Abraham notwithstanding, the deadness of the womb of Sarah notwithstanding, Isaac came. Isaac came nothing is dead until your faith is dead nothing is dead
dead until your faith dies. Nothing is dead until your faith dies. All right. We're trying to make faith very simple. I'd like you to know that you can survive all hard times. You can survive it. You can survive it. In fact, not just surviving, you can blow some in hard times. You can blow some in hard times. We have had many scriptural reference of how our fathers of faith blossom in hard times all right there was famine in the times of abraham yet abraham increased in wealth increased in wealth in the days of elijah there was famine yet the ravens always come to bring food to elijah and when the raven stopped and the brook died dry was dried god led elijah again and commanded a widow to feed him all right and god also showed up to the widow by making the bread the meal of bread never to run dry and the cruise of oil of that woman never to run dry for three and a half years in the midst of famine in the midst of hard times the bible speaking in genesis chapter 47 it said money failed in egypt genesis 47 verse 15 money failed in egypt money failed in egypt yet jacob had money to spend money failed in egypt yet jacob had money to spend so believers always blossom in hard times all right but we are going to look at how and the steps that they follow to survive and to blossom in hard times he said follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise who through faith and patience obtain the promise follow them so if the way to live and to blossom in hard times by faith by in hard time is by faith then what is faith number two what is faith faith is maintaining a positive and resolute conviction at the face of unpalatable condition faith is maintaining a positive and resolute conviction at the face of unpalatable conditions maintaining a positive conviction maintaining a resolute conviction at the face of unpalatable conditions that is faith the meaning of that is you can use your conviction to change your condition you can use your convictions to change your condition if the condition is not what you want if the condition is not what you like you can use your conviction to change your conditions 
Because faith is maintaining your conviction and using that conviction to change any condition that is not palatable. That is faith. When we say conviction, what do we mean? Conviction or convictions are the things that you really, really believe. Convictions. Your convictions. They are the things that you really, really believe. That's your conviction. They are the things that are set to deep down in your heart. Your convictions are things that are set to deep down in your heart. Unfortunately, many of us have been raised with many what do I call it now? Many convictions that are not helpful. Many convictions that are not helpful. We have come to believe many things in our heart. And those things are the things that are affecting our lives. You know, in fact, there are some convictions that as if you grow up in the Yoruba settings, you, you know, there's a way your leg, like, there's something they used to say about your leg, about the legs of a man, that if, if one leg is bigger than the, than the other, that person will be poor. You see, no matter what you say, some people believe it. And they so believe it that nothing can change it. your convictions what are your convictions what are your convictions what are the basis for your convictions listen to me i don't know how but i think i can tell you not i think i know i can tell you that i just know by the word of god that i can never be poor i just know it I just know it. It is settled in my heart. No matter what you say, no matter what is your what is happening, there is a conviction in my heart that says to me anyhow that I can never be poor. He said to there. He said to there. One of the reasons why. I am not perturbed in ministry is because I settled it before I started that I cannot fail in ministry. So no matter what is happening, that conviction is there. No matter what I'm seeing, even what if what I'm seeing does not look like what I am expecting, listen to me, I just know it down in my heart that I cannot fail in ministry. I just know it. Even when I don't have money in my pocket, even when I don't have money in my bank account, I just know it that I can never be poor. It's a conviction. It's settled in my heart. And that is faith. That is faith. Do you have a conviction? What is the basis of your convictions? What's the basis? Let's read some scriptures. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. You will see, you will see just to show you how that. Or just to show you examples of convictions. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. 
look at that i want us to do it together all right i don't want to preach alone I want, I want us to do it together can somebody read that for me look at that please read it loud he said being what being confident now in spite of what is happening i am just confident of this thing uh-huh that he which has begun a good work in you we perform it until the day of jesus christ being confident no matter what is happening i am just confident that he who has begun a good work in my life will surely bring it to perfection he's not the god of abandoned project i am confident of this thing sir i am confident that god will not take me to the middle of the road and leave me at the middle of the road he will take me to the end i am confident of this one thing that god if he's the alpha he surely is also the omega i am confident he who has begun a good work shall surely bring it to perfection i am confident of that the message translation look at that there has never been the slightest doubt in my heart that the God who started this great work we keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish all right look at that the meaning of that is I started something let me relate it I started a project when cement was 7,000 naira and all of a sudden cement jumped to 12,000 naira I am confident that he who began that work will surely finish it. Anyhow, anyhow, I am just confident. Are you getting what I'm saying? I entered on the level, Lautek, with 120. And now, 300 level or 200 level, tuition fee is 450. I am just confident that he who has begun the good work will surely bring it to perfection. I may not know how. Listen to me. Stop using your head to calculate faith. I told us faith does not dwell in the sense realm. That's why faith does not make sense. I am just confident that the one that has started the work will finish it. You want to read one translation? Which translation is that? TPT translation. Uh huh. I pray with great faith for you because I am fully convinced. Listen, are you fully convinced that you are unstoppable? Are you fully convinced that you will survive this time? Are you fully convinced that no matter what happens, you will blossom in this season? He said, I'm fully convinced uh -huh. that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you. He will faithfully continue the process. Huh? You have one translation there. I know that God is working inside you. He has already started doing a good thing. He will keep on working in you. Until he has properly finished. Now listen to me. One thing I want you to understand is. You see when God is working. You may not see with your physical eyes. That you are not seeing with your physical eyes does not mean it's not working. You must be convinced. Being confident. Let me show you another scripture. 
Are we getting it? Because it is maintaining a positive conviction. A positive, no matter what, maintaining that conviction. This is my conviction. It's like saying, this is my stand, no matter what. And nothing will shift my ground. That's faith. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Since we are reading for me, let somebody again. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Okay. For our rejoicing is this. You are reading from TPT. King James. Okay. Uh -huh. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Wait. For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Wait. I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. <laughs> Listen. I am persuaded. I am not just believing in him. I did not just believe him. I am also persuaded. <laughs> okay. That he is able to keep. That which I have committed unto him. Against that day. Against that day. Listen. The best example I can show you is this. It's like taking oath there now. <laughs> and in your heart, on your conviction. I know. I know him whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. That if I have put oatmeal in his hand. He will keep oatmeal. <laughs> Are you get what I'm saying? Other children can go wayward. I am fully persuaded that he can go wayward. I am fully persuaded that he will keep him until that day. I am fully persuaded that no death can snatch this boy out of my hand. The boy may be very sick, but I am persuaded that this sickness is not unto death. But it is unto the glory of the law. Because I have kept him in his hand. I am persuaded that he will keep him. On that platform, you rest. And everybody is wondering, ah, you are not even afraid. You are not even afraid. And he said, I have kept him in God's hand. I am persuaded. Ah. I'm persuaded. I am convinced. Now, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it looks like what is what you are seeing in the life of that child is not whatever. Look, I am convinced. I have kept him in God's hands. <laughs> I have kept him. I am persuaded. No agitation. You only do correction. No agitation. Are you getting what I'm saying? To balance because some people would not be careless. No. You do the correction, but there is no agitation. I am persuaded. I have kept my children in God's hand. If I have kept them in God's hand, I am persu fully persuaded. He will keep them to the end. I may not be there to watch over them. He will keep them. He will keep them. If I have committed my life into his hands, I am fully persuaded that he will keep me. It's a conviction that he said to. I have, I have committed my future into his hands. Listen to me. I can't see the future, but he knows the future. Somebody said, I may not know what the future holds. But I know the one that holds the future. And it, not, it does not just hold the future. He has power to control the future. And I have committed that future into his hands. 
<laughs> so I am fully persuaded. Come what may, my future is settled. Come what may. No matter what is happening, my future is settled. It's guaranteed. That's faith. It's settled. This may look like the extreme of the gospel. But can I share something with you? I'm fully persuaded my future is settled irrespective of the mistakes I make. Listen, how did I know? The Bible says that Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. Now listen, God had not created Adam and Eve yet. And yet, he slain Jesus. Do you know the meaning of that? Should in case Adam and Eve make mistakes, he had factored it in. My mistake. So, you see, you have to get to a point in God by faith. It's not that you are deliberately making mistakes, oh, but you are, you, you are convinced in God that God had factored everything about me. The Bible says he knows us. He knows that we are all flesh. He knows us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows everything. But hear me. He has, uh, he has factored everything in. And he said, if I've committed that life onto his hands, if I've committed that my future into his hands, I am convinced. I'm fully persuaded that he's able to keep it. Instead of getting agitated, commit it into his hands and stand in faith. Commit it into his hands and stand in faith. You know, it's not that it's not that we too don't have challenges, so, but these are the things that we know that keep us going, that put us on our feet and make us look like there are no challenges. We've been reading about I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm persuaded, I'm confident. Look at Philippians chapter 125. We are talking about convictions. That's faith. Philippians 1 25. Look at that. And having this confidence, I know. I know that I shall abide and what? And continue with you. Wait. I am very sick in my body. I am convinced I'm going nowhere yet. <laughs> oh, you, you don't understand that. <laughs> the doctor just gave me a report that is scary. Paul said, I am confident of this thing. That I will be very much around with you. <laughs> How my body is feeling notwithstanding. The news of death I'm hearing around notwithstanding. I am confident of one thing. In case you think I'm going... I am very much around. <laughs> I am very much around. Read it. Yet deep in my heart. I am confident that I will be speared. <laughs> I am confident that, listen, others may not escape it, but I will escape it. Me, oh, <laughs> me, I will escape it. They may not escape it, but I will escape it. 
I'll be very much around. <laughs> no, he was not talking about. He was not saying, I'm, "Hey, you see, I don't know where. Maybe, as the Lord wills." He said, "I am confident on this matter. This one is settled. Forget it." I'm confident on this matter. Forget it. I'll be very much around. In case you are thinking that uh, uh, <laughs> I may not graduate with you, say, forget it. Relax. Forget it. Anyhow, anyhow, I am graduating with you. Anyhow, no matter what is happening. I am confident. So, do you have convictions? Do you have convictions? That no matter what is happening, you are standing on your conviction. Not on your, you are not looking at your condition. Are you getting what I'm saying? The condition is saying the opposite, but you stand on your conviction. You stand on your conviction. Praise the Lord. I remember those, those days. You know, in fact, I discovered that sometimes the more God blesses men, we relax on some faith. Those early days, we finished from those times when we were using no, not that okay. Ah, um, balance suit. We finished on a Wednesday like that, and we, we got home. There was nothing to eat. There was nothing. My wife was trying to run around the kitchen to whatever. You know, women has a way of creating things out of nothing. But that day, there was nothing she could create. To tell you, there was nothing. But listen, a scripture was just in my heart. He daily loves us with benefit. That scripture was just in my heart together with, I have been young and I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his children beg for bread. Those two scriptures were just in my heart. And listen, it was after, it was Wednesday after service. That was around after seven to eight. How it was going to happen, I didn't know. I was looking at my children, I was looking at my wife. But those scriptures was just coming to my heart. Listen to me. I ran after hate. My phone rang and somebody called. A friend that just came from Qatar. And he said, Pastor, please, can I see you this night? I said, this night? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, you can't see me this night. He said, please, I just need to. Because I thought, all I thought is that he needed prayer. He said, please, I need to see you this night. I said, if it is a must, then I'll come out. Do you know Adeniro? He said, yes. So I came out. I stood there. He came. As he came, we hugged. And he said to me, something just told me I must see you this night because I am leaving back to Qatar tomorrow. So, what is the prayer point? What is it? He said, I don't have any prayer point. Something just told me I should see you and give you this. I can't forget 27,000. You don't need to know how God will do it. Stand on your conviction. Stand on your conviction. Don't stand on your conviction. If as I'm talking now, I remember you too. <laughs> One day like that, I was, I think I, I was with um, a family. 
dedicating their house and the hope i have in my heart that day is that i dedicate finish they give me envelope so that dedication i prayed i was praying and like so that they will know that i prayed <laughs> as i finished praying and the house was dedicated and whatever i saw that uh, there was no movement so i sat down <laughs> i sat down and i was makapaya na kazatalia karuna tu zakapaya na kuze kopa yikalapa yuna kuze te after a while i said i will be going they said thank you so much sir thank you god bless you thank you so much you see i'm telling you i'm, I'm telling you true life now as they left me the only thing i didn't do was to shed tears that's the only thing i didn't do i stood they don't have a gate yet they have left i stood there i look up lord how and uh, for so many years i've not seen him this same pastor for so many years i've not seen him and uh, his, my phone just rang and i i looked at the uh, whatever ah sorry he says sir where are you sir i said i'm somewhere he said i need to see you today sir are you in no he said i'm in no sure. i need to see you so the last fuel in the car i ran it home as he came i looked at him he embraced me we greeted and he said sir i will not i will not stay long i just have this for you i collected it look at me I'm, I'm confessing now i collected the envelope i dropped it like this as if i don't care the lord bless you the lord increase you the lord multiply you <laughs> as i got to the gate and he departed i ran inside i counted the money fifty thousand. ah i sat on the floor and began to bless him listen to me your brain is too small to calculate god just stand on your convictions it look if god can command the ravens to bring food he can command any man and you get what i'm saying ravens is a very stingy board ravens is akagon nothing they leave his hand but yet god said i have commanded the ravens as if that was not enough i have commanded the widow not even the rich woman not you see the ordinary mind will be expecting the rich woman but god said to make you see that i am god there is nothing too difficult for me i have commanded the widow can you maintain your stand when all things are shaking everything is shaking but you are still maintaining your stand you know many times when we talk about glory arena here that we are going to do this many of many people think like maybe there is one money that we have saved there's it is maintaining our stand that's what we are doing maintaining our conviction irrespective of what happens irrespective of what is going on do you think we have not seen things that should scare us we have seen but we are standing hear me son i can never be poor i'm telling you 
I can never. Impossible can't. Yes, I like that. I can never. And you see, even before, even before I got to know this in the Bible, this woman has been operating on that, on that realm for so. I, I, I've shared it with her. When we were planning marriage, I was asking her, what is your hope? I was asking her. She's here her life. I will sit her down and ask her, look, she be I'm the husband. <laughs> my is equal to so what's your hope i remember there's one she will always tell me even if i'm earning is it seven thousand you call it ten thousand she will say even if i'm earning ten thousand honestly he will lead me so i will look at her that ah. but you know after some times when i see that ah it's your wife that is saying this and you you are the pastor you are the husband then I went to search the scripture. Somebody say, I am convinced. Oh my God. Say it loud and clear. Say, I am convinced. That no matter what happens, my future is blessed. The future of my children is blessed. I am convinced. It is settled in my heart. My children cannot be reward. Oh, no, 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 no. I am convinced I can't die before my time. No matter what is happening. I'm convinced. I am confident. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? That's why I'm teaching this. That's why I'm not preaching it. You know, I told us on Wednesday, I said, dollar will come down. Has dollar come down or not? It's still coming. If the Lord permits me, I will share some things with us on Sunday. If he permits me. You know, when we say some things, it looks like, ah, Nikoro, baby. God speaks to his people. God speaks so. In fact, anybody that wants to hear, I can tell you, God is looking for people to share secrets with. I can tell you. In fact, do you know what he told me today? He said, son, if you can pay the price, there's a dimension that I want to take you to. A dimension where you will carry in your hand the solution to the problem of nations. And I look at myself, look at my size, look at everything. He said, if you can pay the price. I'm asking him, what is the price? God speaks. God speaks. You know when he was talking to, oh, I'm preaching on faith, but hear this. When I was talking to Moses, and Moses was writing Genesis, Moses was not alive. Who? All those things that Moses wrote, he was not, they've not given back to him. And then when God began to talk to him about the life of Noah, you know what God said? God said to Moses, he said, when Noah reared that sacrifice, I said in my mind that I will not destroy the world again with water, with flood. Do you know the meaning of that? That means God bottled some things up in his mind and he was looking for who to share it with. 
And because Moses was available, God said, hey, hey, let me now tell you what I kept in my heart. Ah, may the Lord reveal things to you. May the Lord speak to you. Okay, we are talking on faith, right? What is faith? Let me give you one more. Faith is approaching every issue of life with the mind of Christ. Write it down. Faith is approaching every issues of life with the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. Approaching every issues of life with the mind of Christ. He said, For who hath known the mind of the law that it may instruct him? But we have what? The mind of Christ. So faith is approaching every issue of life with the mind of Christ. Hear me. There is no scarcity in the mind of Christ, there is no lack in the mind of Christ. There is no impossibility in the mind of Christ. God has never had to do anything through Jesus and it looks impossible for him to do. No, 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 no impossibility does not exist in the mind of Christ. Let dollar be let, dollar, let one dollar be 20,000. There is no impossibility in the mind of Christ. If you search his mind, there is no impossibility in his mind. I think it was a man that built the glass cathedral. What's his name? Huh? What's his name now? The man, there was a man that built, you can help me Google it. I've forgotten his name now. And he just, he just, just, he built, a, he wanted to build a glass cathedral, all glass, that when you stand in that church like this and you look up, you are seeing the sky all glass i've checked it before i've checked the the picture of the church before all right eh robert shula yeah robert shula yes was that it? was that what? robert shula yeah i think he was the one that wrote uh tough time never last but tough people do yeah when he wanted to build that, that church, he called his um, architect. And he said, I want to build a whole glass church. And the architect said, no, it is not possible. It's impossible. And Robert Shula brought out a small dictionary in his pocket and gave it to the architect. And he said, please, can you show me the word impossible? And the man looked at it, looked for 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 it. He didn't see it. And then he said, I can't see it here, but ah, ah. I know there is impossible now. I, I know there is a word called impossible. But how come I can't find it in this dictionary is what I don't know. And Robert Shula said, give me my dictionary. He said, this is my dictionary. He said, in my own dictionary impossibility does not exist after i tore it off i tore it off it does not exist and guess what with that mind they went into construction they started the building and they finished the building impossibility is not in the mind of christ 
never again say it is impossible. If you don't know what to do, tell them, wait, I'm coming. Never allow the devil to suggest impossibility to you on any matter. On any matter. Oh, this land is 5 million naira. You like it? Wait for me. Listen, it is better to try, to try faith, than to move in the direction of unbelief. What if God has a miracle waiting for you? Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to remember now, but I can't remember exactly the person. Because I'm not going to exaggerate anything. They were to buy, they wanted a land. Oh no. Okay, it was this, it was this pastor that was sharing that with me yesterday. I'll, just, I'll share this and then show you two scriptures. A man... <laughs> Tabernacle of power, clap for yourself, clap for yourself, clap for yourself. You are wonderful people. A pastor, pastor in the church, and just like we have, uh, what's this we have downstairs now? A, a restaurant downstairs. The pastor will preach and preach and preach. People will not give offering. And after the service, they'll go to the restaurant and start eating plenty food. And it got to a time they couldn't pay the rent of the church. The landlord came and told them, he gave them one week. The man told me the story yesterday. Give them one week to park. The pastor came to the church and no, came to the church and told the church, We have been giving this, this, I just hey, hey, yeah. So where are we going now? And he will, he, will, <laughs> he will get downstairs and, still, and meet these people eating big food. So he went, said, God, but you called me. You called me. You told me to start this work. If nobody will do it, I know you can do it. And guess what? The man told me yesterday, he said, and a man stood up, said, and came to this man and said, he, he had a dream and God told him, go to that pastor and this your building, give it to him. And the man went by compulsion and carried the document. That, see, I don't like you. I only see you. But I saw in a dream and God told me, I can't miss it. God told me I should come and give you this house. Uncompleted. And then as the man took the document and knelt down in the front of the building, the Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. What is this? Lord, thank you. What is this? An allergy came and said, what are you thanking God for? And he said, I was given this building. And the man said, but the building is not fine. It's not good enough. It's not plastered. And the allergy said, Every cement needed here and everything needed to complete this, I supply. An allergy. He just told me yesterday, he told me the story yesterday because they are his relatives. The pastor is his relative. The mind of Christ is the mind of possibilities. Nothing, there is no impossibility. I mean, there's no, there's no impossibility in that mind. He needed 
started to pay tax because there's no impossibility in his mind. He said, go to the river. Let's read two scriptures and you see something there and then we conclude. Has God blessed you today? Somebody say after me, there is no impossibility with God. If there is no impossibility with God, then there is no impossibility with me. All things are possible for me beginning from today. Mark 10, 27 and Mark 9, 23. We read these two scriptures together and you see something there. Just make one equation for us. And um, Mark 10, 27. Can somebody read that for me? Mark 10, 27. Mark 10, 27. And Jesus, looking upon them, said, look at that. Jesus was the one talking here. With man, uh -huh, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, how many things? I can't hear you. How many things? He said, with God, all things are possible. So, this is the realm at which God operates. All things are possible. Mark 9, 23. Jesus still talking. The same Jesus. Now, remember Mark 10, 27. Jesus revealed to us that with God, all things are possible. Now, Jesus is talking again. Now, hear what he said. If thou can just believe, all things are possible to him that what? Remember, all things are possible for God, to God. Now, Jesus is now saying to the man, you carry book, you, if you can just believe what is possible to God is also possible to you. For God, all things are possible because he's God. But he now said, there is something that can shift you from the realm of men to God. If you can just believe, you will move from the realm of men and you will move into the realm of God where all things are possible. So faith shifts you from the realm of men to the realm of God. If you can just believe all things are possible. The way they are possible to God, the same way they become possible to you because you believe. Because you believe. So the next time you are faced to face with something, just ask, is this thing possible for God? If it is possible for God, then all I need is to bring the mind of Christ, which is faith in God, to bring it into action, then as it becomes possible to God, it also becomes possible to me. Do you understand that now? So look at that project and ask, ask yourself, is it possible for God? So if it is possible for God, then it is possible for me. All I need is my faith. And faith is what? approaching every issues of life with the mind of Christ. Rise to your feet. I think today is the last son. Today is the last 
Is today the last day? No. Tomorrow is the last day. Okay. Everybody carry your Bible. Since we have talked about it. Mark 9.23 Open it and let's read together. Mark 9.23 Everybody? I'm sure you are not looking at the whole, you are not looking for it in the Old Testament. Matthew Mark uh -huh. Are you there? If you are there, say Amen. Okay, let one, two, let's read together. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things. How many things? How many things? I can't you how many things? Are what? To him that believeth. By the special grace of God, and according to the privilege of election, the month of March is our month of all round possibilities. All round possibilities. Somebody saying all things are possible for me. Say my wealth is possible this month. My wealth is possible. My success is possible. My healing is possible. My divine health is possible. Go ahead and begin to declare everything. Everything that is possible. Begin to declare there. All round possibilities. All round, all round, all round, all round, all round. All round possibilities. All round possibilities. All round. Yes, all round. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Our success is possible. Renato Setogia. Yes, Lord. Divine supply is possible. Abundance is possible. Le Parona Shatalea. Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Yes. Completion of glory arena is possible. It's possible. In the name of Jesus. All run possibilities. The roofing of glory arena is possible in the month of march 2024 it is possible in the name of jesus my wealth is possible my prosperity is possible my divine health is possible in the name of jesus in the name of jesus bring out your offering use it as a point of contact begin to declare my supernatural supplies are possible my abundance is possible yes my prosperity is possible in the month of march 2024 it is possible in the name of jesus say something about your finance especially in a time like this yes my abundance is possible Reno Sutoria, my more than enough is possible in this month of March in the name of Jesus. Yes, abundance and fruitfulness is possible in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I declare. In the month of March, our month of all and possibilities, I pray for everyone. Everything shall be possible for you. In the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible for you this month. In the name of Jesus. Financially, God is blessing you on all sides. You have more than enough. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please be seated, cast your offering.